Welcome in and welcome to My Sweet Home Living. My name is Tracy Campbell. Excited to have you here with me today where I love to share fun and easy DIY primitive style projects that you can create on a budget to decorate your home. So come on in and say hello. I would love to see who's here today. I have been missing in action <laughs> for the last few weeks, so I can't wait to see you today. Good morning and good morning and good morning. Uh, it's 9.45 a.m. Central Time here in West Kentucky, Northwest Kentucky. Uh, let me know where you're tuning in from, what part of the world you're watching from. I always love to see my friends from all over the world. So you may be watching this live today here on Facebook or the replay over on my YouTube channel. Either way, the replay will be there uh, for you. I know this is a very special weekend if you're watching this current. Um, this is Easter weekend and uh, wishing everyone a blessed Easter weekend and uh, so excited you could come and spend some time with me today. Good morning, Miss Sheila. Good morning, Miss Barb. Good morning, Shelly. You guys, I am so excited about today's project. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait. I'm like kind of, kind of giddy about it, honestly. Um, kind of an idea that kind of just hit me on a whim. Um, and I've, I've seen this item I'm not going to give any clues away just yet. Uh, seen some of uh, these items before. And you know how when you see things, you're thinking, oh, wow. I bet I could make that. If only I could just make it. You know, just put your mind to it and make something, right? So that's what I'm doing today. But in true uh, My Sweet Home Living fashion, we are taking things, ordinary things that you have around the house and using those items today to create something absolutely amazing. Good morning, Miss Joy. Good morning, Amanda and Regina. Uh, so let me tell you some of the things that we are using today, just to kind of go ahead and get that out of the way so you'll know if you want to stick around or not. Trash bag. <laughs> and plastic grocery sacks. A little bit of packing tape. We are using, uh, oh, let me show you. Where did that go? Uh, mm -hmm. Tea bag papers. You will have seen me use tea bag papers before on a couple of projects. Uh, these are tea bags that have been used and then opened up to dump out the tea grounds. And I just saved the paper part of the tea bag. So we're using these today. And some coffee podge. <laughs> Uh, a little bit of cheesecloth maybe uh, at the end here, but Coffee Podge is my coffee grunge mixture. You all been around my sweet home living, you all know that I love this stuff. <laughs> I use it on almost everything. So Coffee Grunge today, yes, and Coffee Podge, which is just a mixture of some of this mixed in with some school glue, okay? So uh, just to get that kind of out of the way, but if you're new here, welcome in. I love to show you how to take something uh, that you probably have around the house or something very simple and turn it into something amazing that you can use for your home decor. And uh, some of the items that we've created over the last couple of months that might fit your style. Ooh, let's see if we can flip this camera. Let's flip it, flip it, flip it maybe <laughs> there we go love creating things that are just old-fashioned vintage and primitive style so if you like these things and you're new to me do check out my video library i've got lots of video replays a faux pas here it's so cute we made this for valentine's day um and but before i go any further i need to mention that this is a special segment in the craft on the clock group you all know I love the Craft on the Clock group. That is where my heart is over there in that group of fellow creative friends. I would love for you to check it out if you don't already know about the Craft on the Clock group. Do check it out. We have live crafting Monday through Friday every week, early morning to late at night. But today is Fun Theme Friday over there. And uh, it's all about Home Sweet Farm. And uh, so all of the video replays will be over there in that group. And if you are watching this video like sometime beyond today or, you know, a week or two or a month or two later, you can go over there to the Craft on the Clock group and search in the search bar of the group. Type in hashtag farm craft 
and it will pull up all things related to farm themed crafts and projects including the ones that you may be seeing today for Fun Themed Friday for Home Sweet Farm. So I can't wait to show you what we're doing today you guys. So let me just start out. I'm just going to kind of show you a little sneak peek at what we're doing and I want you to see if you can maybe figure out where we're going with this okay mm, okay it's a little misshapen but this is what I've started on slightly now you may look at this and think what in the heck <laughs> what in the world is you doing today we are going to make a primitive country ham hanger Okay, so if you are not maybe not familiar with things from the farm or farm raised or farm fresh or farm foods, maybe you're familiar with somewhere like Cracker Barrel, <laughs> where they have farm fresh breakfast foods and things like that. But you can actually buy a whole country ham uh, shoulder or a cured ham um, from Cracker Barrel and places like that. They are wrapped and they are actually a whole ham shoulder if you will and so um that's what we're creating today and this is something that you can hang um maybe on a peg shelf in your kitchen um just if you have country style farm house style and you love this kind of decor this is going to fit perfect uh, good morning miss beth miss beth from rekindled blessings is up after me today uh so we're going to give it a try we're going to give it a try i'm going to show you how i got started and uh, I do have some pieces already kind of in stages so that I can uh, show you kind of the process and maybe hopefully get the finished project done today during our segment today. Uh, you had that country ham from Cracker Oh, yes, Miss Sagetta. <laughs> country ham, fresh from the farm. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. If you can't get it fresh from the farm, the next best thing is buying it um, like that. I mean, it, a farm breakfast. Ooh, nothing beats a farm breakfast and so this prop that we're making today will go perfectly with a lot of the other props that I have shown you in the past how to make um, even like our farm fresh biscuits our faux biscuits here um, that I showed you how to create oh maybe a year or two ago um, and our farm um, fresh jellies I need to show you this little jelly little uh, faux jelly jar I, I love creating things like this that can be used around in your in your home decor and um, this will just be another added piece that you can add to your decor. Good morning. Making you hungry now, Kim, <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, a ham. You <laughs> I, it's funny, isn't it, how things work? I mean, I've had creative block for like the last couple of weeks just because I've been working around things around my home. And, um, you know, you just never know when things will hit you. And this hit me yesterday. I'm thinking, that's it that's it that's what I want to do <laughs> and I've been thinking about these in the past but you know if you don't see them they're not fresh on your mind and you kind of forget about them good morning Elizabeth <laughs> need to try that jelly jar I was gonna show you guys how to make the jelly jar again because that's been a while and that's one of the most popular things I get asked about is how to make that jelly jar so I'll be showing you how to make that pretty soon so you're gonna start out with a white trash bag okay now I know this sounds funny but there are some trash bags, and this is not like necessary. This was actually like a happy accident that I discovered this. But some of these trash bags, and I forget what they're called. Um, they have a name for them. I mean, this is nothing fancy. This is just a cheap old trash bag. But do you see that little grid pattern on that? Do you all know those packaged hams kind of have that grid pattern to them? Um, so this was kind of a happy accident and I'm going to show you in a little bit. It actually does kind of show up and it adds to the effect of, uh, of your ham. Good morning, Miss Irma. Good morning, Cindy. So you're going to take this and you know, I showed you that we were going to make, uh, or take a lot of something that you have around the house, right? A flex bag. Thank you, Sherry. Perfect. That's exactly it. Happy Easter, Miss Mary. I hope you have a blessed weekend. Uh, you're going to just take and stuff it with those plastic grocery sacks. And I mean, who doesn't have a ton of plastic grocery sacks? <laughs> I know I'm not the only one, <laughs> right? So you can make this as big or as small as you want it. Uh, but I am sticking with just the white trash bag or the white grocery sacks because, you know, I don't want any color showing through. Now, there is some print on some of those grocery sacks, and I think that's okay. 
So all I did is I stuffed that bag, okay? Now, I'm gonna squeeze the air down out of it to see kind of what size I have. And you can, like I said, you can make this as big or as small as you want because, you know, Pam's come in all different shape, shapes and sizes. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Pam, how are you? Good morning, Violet and Melissa. So you're just gonna kind of fold this cinch it, whatever you want to call it, into this oblong shape. Like, it looks like a ham shoulder. If you don't know what shape a ham shoulder looks like, just Google it, okay? It's kind of this oblong, okay, we're just looking at the shape here, okay? Now, right now, mine looks like a pointy uh, icing bag. <laughs> ice like icing uh, bag okay so this is what you're gonna get for a minute now you're gonna take some clear packing tape okay and what you're going to do you're gonna use this packing tape to help finish getting your shape that you need now this pointy end we don't want the pointy end so all I'm gonna do is take this and wrap it up with that packing tape and it completely makes that bottom uh, not so pointed, okay? Now, a ham shoulder usually kind of comes up and it gets narrow again at the top and where the ham bone, how many of you all like to cook and season things with ham bone? <laughs> I know, farm cooking. Good morning, Miss Debbie. I was, I was not able to watch your farm tour, but I wanna go back and watch the replay. I was so excited to see that you were showing um, some behind the scenes look at your your daughter's farm this morning that was so cool so if you all like all things farm you all check out the craft on the clock group uh, for today and if you're not the watching you know if you're watching this later the replays will be you can find them by searching in the craft on the clock group for the hashtag farm crafts okay and everything will pull up that's farm related today okay so now one one side needs to be a little flatter than the other and your ham bone is gonna kinda be a little off-centered a little bit, okay? So I'm just taking that trash bag, and I'm just, you saw what I was doing, I was just wrapping that around itself, okay? And so, depending on what angle you're looking at it, you're gonna kinda make this like a ham bone shape, okay? Now, I'm not gonna continue, but you kinda get the idea. You're gonna use your clear packing tape to tape this down, okay? And if you have any areas I probably need to stuff mine a little bit more. Um, if you have any areas that just aren't quite getting shaped up right, use that clear packing tape to help it give you the shape that you're looking for, okay? That's how I started my base. All right, so we're tossing that over to the side. So then what you're gonna do, ooh, tickly, tickly. Okay, this is what I'm working on now, okay? This is the next step. Now, right now my shape isn't still quite isn't exactly the way I want it, but we're going to be able to finish that and, and fix the shape to it with this cheesecloth, which is one of the final steps to this. So what I have taken on this trash bag, <laughs> I told you we were taking uh, things that you have around your house that's easily accessible and, and using it for today's project. So what I have done is I have covered... I've just done this side to kind of give you a peek at what it looks like. Okay, I mean, isn't that color like amazing and perfect? It's all achieved with using these tea bag papers. Okay, you I've told you all before, save your tea bags. If you're a tea drinker, save your tea bags. You could also use coffee filters. You could use dryer sheets. You could use tissue paper. You could use napkin plies. Whatever you have like that will work. Okay. Good morning, Miss Kathy. And then you're gonna take like a, a Mod Podge mixture, whatever you use for like decoupaging, like gluing things onto something. All I do is I take a little bit of my coffee grunge and I add some white school glue to it in a jar and I just mix it up. So it already has that coffee and that cinnamon look color to it. And that just even adds to the coloration of the papers here, okay? now. 
If you are on my Telegram channel, you are getting the free printable right now. It just delivered to you the printable that I'm gonna be using that I custom designed for today's project. I haven't even shown you yet. So it's on the Telegram channel, it was just delivered. You will get that, okay? If you're not on my Telegram channel, you'll want to, uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, um, let's see here, do, 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 right there. Now let's see if that shows up. Um, that may show up right there on your screen, hopefully. If not, you can type in, if you're watching this on Facebook, type in the word exclamation point telegram, all one word, no spaces, and it will reply back to you in the comments and give you the link to where you can click to head over to my telegram and get that printable today. Free, it's free. <laughs> you don't have to pay for it. I made it this morning just for you guys. And I'll show you what it looks like here in a little bit. Okay, now this is already pretty much dry but I want me to show you how I did this. I took this coffee podge, really simple. Now this is messy, but it's gonna be so worth it. I got it, it's an amazing printable. Awesome, Miss Joy, yes, there's that link to my Telegram. Someone uh, chimed in there, so if you see that in the comments, you can click on that, uh, and it will give you a little link to where you can get it. You got it, Miss Becca, awesome! <laughs> I love giving y'all freebies over on my Telegram channel, and you guys, let me just tell you something. That Telegram channel is gold because if there is ever anything that happens here in social media land and you can't find me anymore, <laughs> you'll want to go to my Telegram channel uh, to see what's happening or where you can find me or over on YouTube or, or wherever. You know, you just never know. So we have to cover all bases because we don't want to lose you guys. Okay. So I just spread that coffee podge mixture right on this hand. Let me tilt my camera down for you a little bit. All right, this faux ham trash bag, if you will. <laughs> Got it, Miss Pam, awesome. Um, so then I just take these tea bags, this one I didn't even get all the tea grounds off of, and I just lay it right on top of where I spread that that coffee podge is what I like to call it. Coffee podge right there. You love the label? Awesome. Good. I thought y'all might like that. So that just gave you a little sneak peek at what we're going to put on the front of this hand when we're finished. <laughs> All right. So I've just laid that right on top of that wet layer of coffee podge and smoothed it down. This is messy, but it will be worth it. Okay. If you have wrinkles, Yes, we want wrinkles. <laughs> so that's what you're gonna get. And then um, if you have little areas that kind of want to pucker or not want to lay down, just kind of go and touch it up. Key here is patience. Patience is the key. That's what I've discovered this morning as I was doing this. Patience to kind of get it, um, you know, to adhere to this trash bag. And I will say the more packed and condensed that you have your, um, your trash bag filled, you know, the more firm your shape is to it, probably be a little bit easier for you to adhere these tea bags to, okay? That's kind of what I'm learning as I go here. So you're just gonna continue to cover this uh, until you get your whole ham covered. Now, you can get really sloppy and just go to town, okay? Because it's not going to, you're not going to really mess anything up. As long as you get that white trash bag covered, you're good, okay? Uh, don't worry about the seams showing or anything like that. We're going to work around that uh, as we go. And we are going to add another layer, um, a texture on top of this with something else here in just a little bit um, that will help mask any imperfections as well, okay? But now this is, you know, think of this as something primitive. Um, and so you're, you're wanting that look, all right? So just apply that uh, coffee podge mixture liberally <laughs> um, and you will, it will have to take some time to dry, which is why I already kind of did the front side of this today so that you all could get a good look um, at what it will look like when you have it all covered, okay? Now you will get some air bubbles under these, um, you know, these tea bags, or if you're using coffee filters or tissue paper or napkin plies, um, you will get some little air bubbles 
and that's totally okay. If you get some air bubbles, take a little bit of a sponge brush with that coffee podge and just dab right on top of it and it'll re-wet it and you can like, press it down to where it makes good contact with that trash bag surface, if you will. Okay, your grandson is watching. Oh, she look, that's awesome, Miss Kim. Um, so I'm not gonna keep doing the back a whole lot. I just kind of wanted to give you the method there. Um, I'm not gonna completely, well, I don't know. It won't take very much to actually cover it. Let's go ahead and let's see if we can do that. And I, I won't spend a ton of time making mine exactly perfect, but you can, um, you know, take your time or go as fast or as slow as you want whenever you're doing yours, okay? Now, up at the top, it gets a little trickier because you have those wrinkles, okay? The wrinkles of the, of the trash bag of where you kind of gathered it, okay? Just be patient. Take your fingers and kind of mash that down in there. And then once again, go back over it with that sponge with you know your your coffee podge uh, mixture and just dab it and it'll press it down in those grooves now when this dries it will have a uh, a little bit of a crisper texture to it because of the school glue that you have in that mixture just like when you use um, something like Mod Podge when it dries it gets a little crispy or crunchy thank you miss Karen oh thank you miss Deborah we are we are we are we are we're loving it um, lots of things to be done around the house, <laughs> but that's going to be that it's going to be that way for a long time. Um, but we are hoping we have, we have set a goal to have a lot of our inside projects done, um, before, before, uh, Derby weekend, which is the first weekend in May here in Kentucky, Kentucky Derby. So we're wanting to host some family over that weekend. So, uh, a lot of my painting and um, and things like that I'm gonna try to have done before that weekend so that gives me a good goal too <laughs> a good timeline to reach because I'm almost done getting my wallpaper off and uh, and then I'll be painting lots of spaces around the house so to get to get things looking more cohesive around here that's the goal and then other things will be, you know, one by one. That's that's the other that's the other goal is just take you know one project at a time. <laughs> and I'm horrible at that. I like to start about 50 million projects, and you know how that goes. I think us that are creative have creative minds can sometimes get a little distracted and excited about projects and just kind of go crazy. Um, so you're going to take these tea bags and you're going to go all the way up to where your ham bone would be, okay? And this one, you're going to wrap it, tuck it, you know, like I said, you're going to get those wrinkles and that's totally okay. So honestly, probably the more uh, coffee podge mixture that you add to your bag, the better uh, or the easier it will be on holding it there uh, in place until it dries, okay? I'm just about out of my coffee podge mixture, so we might mix together some more while we are live today. We'll see how far we get. But uh, like I said, we're going to go over this with another layer of something here in a little bit that will even give it a more realistic look I've got a little blank spot right there I'm gonna cover it with a little piece so if you have uh, little holes in between and as you uh, as you work on your piece you will see some little areas that may need a little touch up just take another little piece of that tea bag or coffee filter or whatever you're using and just touch it up just lay it on there wet it down uh, and it'll stay it will stay and it will dry so what I would probably recommend actually as, as you're doing this is to do like the front half first and then as it after it dries turn it over and then do the back which I'm kind of working all the way around <laughs> uh, and it may be better to set it out in the Sun and let it uh, dry under the Sun that would probably speed it up um, I wouldn't set it out in the hot hot Sun because that could distort your shape a little bit of your bags <laughs> I mean they're just plastic bags you know if you get them hot then they they probably will kind of 
want to shrink on you or mash up or you know what I mean um, so think about that but otherwise you can just let it air dry but just be patient um, okay now let me see where we're at on time okay we have about 20 minutes so I think I think we'll be fine we'll be fine uh, I'm gonna get the majority of this white covered I really do want you all to see the full effect because this is this is a stretch of the imagination <laughs> many of you tuning in watching this may be thinking I'm not seeing where she's going with this <laughs> um, so I would like to kind of get as much as we can now, here's some more of these teabag papers my mom saves her teabag papers for me um, she and my dad are big tea drinkers and so she'll save a lot of the tea bags for me and she'll every once in a while she'll say I got a I got another bag of tea bag papers and I've had a bunch sitting around for a while I haven't used them in a while and I thought man I'll use them so always keep them you know just save them up save them in a baggie and um, you will find projects that you can use them on promise instead of throwing them away save them and use them um, for your craft projects I love using tea bag papers they're so versatile I use them a lot on my jars um, and I've even used them on um, some wood projects as well to kind of give it a, a different texture um, now I will say this little hand bone area it's a little tricky <laughs> It's a little tricky. Um, so once again, that's where the patience comes in. There's no right or wrong way to do this, you guys. As long as you can get it covered, um, you're doing good. And if you use the tea bag papers and you use this coffee podge mixture, it already gives you the coloration and you don't have to go through another step of, of painting or um, you know coffee grunging or anything like that because it's already it's already been done for you with the tea the tea bag papers and the coffee podge um, it's already been done so you kind of eliminate a lot of extra steps by using these items okay now this is a little tricky to get it to stay So you can see I'm just kind of smashing it on there, wrapping it around the top. And as it dries, it will also help if you come in and put more of this mixture on top of it. It will help it stay down a little better. Um, this is sort of like, um, what's the word? Oh goodness, the word just left my brain. I'll think of it in a minute um, like if you blow up a balloon and you cover it with paper uh, you all know where I'm going with this uh, let's see tea bag papers are good to use in junk yes absolutely absolutely in junk journals yeah um, I don't do a lot of junk journaling but I have seen some beautiful um, projects and creations you, you know junk journals with using tea bags um, just add it as an added texture to your creations you can even print on tea bags I have done that before as as well excuse me uh, as well all right last little home stretch here I'm just covering it all up right there with some of that coffee podge and we're gonna lay it on and squash it down how do you like the method to that madness <laughs> lay it on and squash it down okay I need yeah we're gonna have to add a little bit more real quick school glue I just I don't measure it you guys I'm sorry if those of you that <laughs> there are those of you that like accurate measurements there's no accuracy here <laughs> Oh, we keep things pretty simple. Nothing fancy around here. Now, I'm going to shake this up because I want some of that cinnamon that has settled at the bottom. 
I want that to pour out into my glue. Mm, there we go. So I'm just going to pour some of that into my mixture. I will say that you want that little sludge. That's what you want in there. You will want more glue than coffee grunge, okay? Because if you dilute your glue too much, um, you'll get a texture that's more watery and will not work quite so well for your projects and then all you're doing is mix that up really well and if you find that it's too watery or too liquidy just add some more glue okay pretty simple and there you go there's our coffee pot <laughs> and it already has that cinnamon vanilla and um, coffee smell to it and color perfect okay i think this up here at the top gets to be the trickiest of all so all i'm doing is i'm just laying this stuff on pretty heavy okay pretty heavy right here and then i'm going to smash it down and any kind of corners of my paper that aren't sticking down i'm going to come in and um pinpoint them with a little bit of that underneath of them just kind of rub it on underneath that paper and then just dab it down just like that and that will help it stay there's a little corner I'm just gonna another like I said this is messy but it's gonna be so worth it <laughs> so worth it okay now, once you get all of your trash bag covered with your tea bags and you let it dry, okay, it's going to stiffen up and that's what we want. If it, don't get worried if it's not stiff as you think it should be, it's totally okay. Okay, now let me wipe my hands off because they're a little messy. Hey, Miss Danny, how are you, sweet lady? Hello from Pennsylvania, Miss Deborah. How are you? I love seeing where you guys are from. Okay. I have lots of coffee podge on my hands because I was working on this a little bit before we ever started this morning. Uh, hey, Miss Rhonda, how are you? Okay, now. I have shown you uh, before how I coffee stain my cheesecloth material, right? Well, you're going to want a big batch of this coffee grunge, coffee stained um, cheesecloth for this next step of the project. Um, let's just, let me pick this up so you can see it. I don't want to touch it a whole lot because it will stick to my fingers because a lot of this is not quite all the way dry. But this is my ham bone, <laughs> my faux ham bone. Now, I do need to reshape it just a little bit so that it looks a little, my camera angle is making this look so wonky. That's a little bit more accurate, maybe. Uh, just look at that, that right there, that looks pretty accurate. Ham bone shape, size, you know, that kind of thing. Now, what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna show you this printable that I designed that you all just got on my Telegram channel. Um, and I've got oh, stuff sitting on top of it. Look at that. Campbell Country Hams. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love that. With a little pig. Now, we're just going to, um, we've got 10 minutes. Okay. Speed mode here. We are going to, um, first I'm going to kind of, cut this down a little bit because I don't want this quite as big as this full size piece of paper. You can enlarge this piece of paper, this design, when you get it, or you can shrink it, whatever you want to do, okay? I just need to apply some wetness so that I can kind of tear it into the shape that I want, okay? And then I'm going to take that coffee grunge and just go right over that label and that is going to give it instant primitive grunge right there. Now I got a lot of cinnamon on that. <laughs> so I'm wiping back some of my cinnamon. It will dry lighter 
um, than it looks when it's wet, okay? That's what I've done. And so you can print that black and white, and then you can grunge it, and it doesn't, doesn't require color ink, okay? Um, and so I'm not going to worry too much of how it tears, other than the fact I do want to make sure that I keep all of my wording on there. Um, okay, so we're ripping this out, and this is going to be our label. Now, you could cut this if you want, if you want a clean edge. Um, something to me, I just like a little bit more of a feathered edge when I'm tearing thing, or when I'm using labels. Okay, now, when I tore that, some of that bright whiteness from that paper kind of showed back up. So I'm just going to go around and kind of spread some of that moisture over those torn edges so that it kind of looks um, not so bright white of the paper. I don't want the, the bright white. See, that's the bright white. <laughs> I want that primitive look side. So that's what I'm going to add right here on the side of my ham. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to put it right there. Now, this will... Let me think about this. I don't know if I want that. Let me, let me show you what I'm, I'm thinking here. I'm using the cheesecloth over top of this, right? But I want to make sure... Yeah, I probably need to put that on top of my cheesecloth. Okay, so let's do this cheesecloth step. I have coffee stained and baked this coffee, uh, not coffee, uh, cheesecloth, okay? And that's what I'm going to use over top of my ham, okay? Good morning, Veronica. How are you? Happy you're here. Um, and I'm going for a really thin layer of this cheesecloth. Now, this cheesecloth, they fold it and fold it and fold it. <laughs> So just when you, it's kind of like napkin plies. You know, when you're pulling apart the plies of a napkin, you think you got them all and then you find one more. <laughs> That's kind of the way cheesecloth is. <laughs> so I am just uh, kind of laying that on top of this ham. Um, isn't it cool, Christina? I'm so excited about this project. Now mine is a little bit damp still, okay? I would recommend that you let yours dry completely after adding your papers, okay? Now, I'm going to take it, and I do want to know which side is my front, because I kind of want, um, I want it to look a little cleaner and smoother on the front. My cheesecloth might not be quite big enough to completely cover, so I'm going to kind of have to overlap it a little bit, and that might be where a little bit of uh, more of the coffee podge will come in handy. Just a little dab, and it actually might work out that mine is still a little bit damp because this coffee uh, podge is kind of helping the cheesecloth stick, if you will. So that might actually be a good thing. So you're just going to lay it down and stretch it out. And this, like I said, this is also where if you don't have exactly the shape to your hand bone that you want, you can kind of pull and twist. And, and get it to like, see like if this side was a little too puffy, I could pull this a little bit tighter and shrink it in. You know what I mean? And um, and then just stick it down to where it sticks to that uh, coffee podge mixture, okay? Now, if you've ever seen a ham, bone, you know, a ham shoulder like this wrapped, then you know that there are wrinkles usually in the uh, cheesecloth wrapping that they put on here. So this is perfect, okay? So, but I want the majority of my, the, that kind of stuff in the back, okay? Um, I want it a little bit more cleaner, if you will, in the front, okay? And they wrap it like this after they've cured it, and they hang them. Hang them in the meat house. <laughs> That's what they would do back in primitive farm days when it was, um, you know, for lack of other terms, it was slaughtering day. Okay, I mean, it's that's just that's just the reality of it. It's, um, just the reality of it. Okay, now I did cut that cheesecloth a little bit because it was I had too much of it, and I could still trim it down. But I do want to make sure that this top 
is wrapped really well. And what I will do whew, after that, I'm probably going to take some um, of this twine. We've got five minutes before our next creator starts over in Craft on the Clock. I'm just going to twist this around and I will probably add several layers of that twine around there. Okay, that gives you, where did that other piece of twine go? <laughs> it disappeared. I've got a whole row here, but I had some cut. That's okay. Okay, so, um, and I'm going to even add like a little tag up here at the top. Uh, this has been coffee sprayed, but I'm going to add a little bit more grunge around the edges. And then I'll probably put like a pretend date on there or maybe even like a price tag or you know something like that that makes it look a little more authentic okay i'll let that just hang on there let's put this on and then we'll put our label on the front oh gosh this is so cool okay tie it down tie it down I want this to lay the other way there we go all right so you can spend a little bit of time fussing with your cheesecloth to get it just right um, for me on the other hand I'm gonna kind of have to tie this and move on to the next step so I don't want to keep you waiting and then this will you could also have a little hanger that you can hang this from on uh, on, a, on a peg shelf or something like that and then I'm going to take my um, ham label here. I may have gotten mine a little too dark. I do want it to stand out. I, I want it to show up. So what I might do for my label, um, after I get it on here and it dries, you know, I'm not going to worry about it being like super straight because I mean, this is going to hang kind of funny. And they did, they just slapped these labels on there. Anywhere there was a good flat spot, they would just slap it on there. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to slap the coffee podge on the back of this. and I'm just going to slap it on there. And then after it dries, I will probably take, um, you know, some kind of ink or something and go around the edge of that label to kind of help it stand out a little bit. Press it down, make it good contact on that cheesecloth so that it stays put. You could even print this label on fabric if you want, okay? Now, so I'm just pressing that down really good. Now I'm gonna add my little date on there. I'm gonna add a little hanger at the top and this was be whew, my little label. <laughs> the lighting is not working out, but this will be my hanging faux cured ham that I will hang from a peg shelf in my kitchen. Isn't that cool? In <laughs> your farm kitchen. I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and thought maybe this wasn't too outlandish of an idea today. Uh, I'm going to spend a little bit more time shaping mine and fixing that label a little bit to my liking. But you guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm so glad you were here today. And uh, head over to my Telegram channel. At some point, that label will be there for you. And I, I will take some pictures of it. I'll stage it up and show you how I'll display it and give you some even more ideas on how you can decorate with it. A faux <laughs> country ham, you guys. All right. The next creator is coming up live now. And we have creatives lined up all the way up until 9.45 p.m. Central Time over in the Craft on the Clock group. And the replays, you can find them by searching that group for hashtag farm craft. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day and have a blessed weekend.